The Grunt and the Grouch by Tracy Corduroy and Lee Wildish. The Grunt was probably the grumpiest troll you'd ever be likely to meet. Just look at his face. Now tell me, would you invite him to your party? Well, one day, someone did just that, and things were never quite the same again. It happened on a Tuesday, the most boring day of the week. This scrappy bit of paper landed on the grunt's dirty doormat. What's this? he cried, snatching it up. So he read the scruffy writing. Dear neighbour, I'm having a party. And guess what? You're invited. There'll be stuff to eat and everything. P.S. Don't forget my prezzy. Who's dared leave this on my doormat? growled the grunt. I don't like Tuesdays. I don't like visitors. And I really don't like parties. So I'm not coming. With that, he tore the invitation into tiny shreds then stomped back inside and finally got to work. Not picking bits of mould off his teeth, not cleaning the bath, not doing the washing up, not even flushing the toilet. Boring Tuesday morning ended and boring Tuesday afternoon began. So the grunt went to town. It was, after all, the perfect place to be horrid. So he jumped in muddy puddles growled at kitty cats and swiped a teddy from every pram he saw. When the postman smiled, Good afternoon! No, it's not! grumped the grunt, then posted him without sticking on any stamps. Back home, as the grunt thundered in through his gate, who should he find but a visitor? Grrr! he bellowed. I'm the grunt! No one parties in my garden. He waved a dirty fingernail. Now clear off, he snarled. Then bang, bang, bang went the pretty balloons as the grunt popped every one. Oi, party pooper, snapped the grouch. You great big grunty grump. Then he chucked a chunk of his pongiest cheese. And that's when the food fight began. Hang on a minute, said the grunt. Those maggot cakes look great. So they sat and ate. And the grunt had such fun, he forgot to be mean. He forgot to be bored. And he even forgot to send the grouch away. Now, burped the grunt. What else can we do? Troll stuff, cried the grouch. So they messed around with spots and goo, took turns to cheat at a game or two, and hid from the sunshine together. A whole week later, the grouch packed up his tent. Oh well, Grunty, he sighed. It's been great. But now I must go, see? I always move garden on a Tuesday. But why? said the grunt. And then he saw it. The tiny troll looked sad. The grunt had never seen sad before. What's more, he'd never cared. But now, suddenly, he did. You ask me why I go, said the grouch, disappearing through the gate. I go because... No one's ever asked me to stay. The grunt sat and thought. Then, wait, he cried, tearing off after his friend. Grouchy, hey, come back, he called. It won't be the same without you. But where was the grouch? He disappeared. So the grunt searched high and low. He raced, he chased, he dashed, he crashed. And then, at last... He found him. Grouchy, stay, <sighs> panted the grunt. Well, thanks, sniffed the little grouch. Then the grunt felt his lips go all tickly and begin to curl up to his ears. What's this, he said. 
It felt so good. And the grouch cried, I think we're smiling. Now the grunt and the grouch are the happiest trolls you'd ever be likely to meet. Still, they never pick bits of mould off their teeth, never clean the bath, never do the washing up, and never, ever, ever flush the toilet. But every Tuesday they get dressed up. Now it's their favourite day, for that's the day they party! So watch out. Meet the grunt and the grouch, if you dare, the grumpiest trolls in the world.